Hello there. So for those of you that weren't aware, for my birthday, I got the new, well, the slightly new Coruscant Guard gunship. It came out at the end of the last year, so I'm still considering it as a roughly new set. Now, this has got to be one of my most anticipated sets ever. I was so looking forward to it. Originally, I was going to pick it up May 4th, but if you are at home wanting to pick this up for May 4th, I definitely recommend adding a battle pack or so to it, just so you qualify for the May 4th purchases. But this set really is as good as it looks on the box. The first thing I will actually be showing off is how the instructions come, because I don't think I've had this in a set before. It's a paper wallet, and this is to replace the plastic bags, which honestly, I don't really think the plastic bags did much for the instructions. They were mainly just to stop other bags scraping along the different pages of the instruction manual and stopping all the pages from tearing. But the instructions themselves are massive. I mean, there's 200, there's about 220 pages in here, and you can just see how thick it is. There's not much extra towards the end. It's not a UCS set, so we're not getting any designer interviews. You've got the one page of the other sets that came out at the same time. You've got the Ahsoka sets, including the Ghost, which I still do want to pick up. And because this was bought around the start of April for me, it also qualified for the Flower Trellis, which if you have seen before, has been on the back wall in a few of these previous videos, and I'll be giving a look to that at the end. So stay tuned for that. But first, let's take a look at the figures that we will be improving for the gunship and all the different functions this set has to offer. Now, first up, before we take a look at the actual gunship itself, I've got to take a look at the figures. Of course, we do get two 212 clone troopers, which, because we're giving Commander Fox, it does sort of balance out three clone troopers. We've got enough to pilot the thing. And of course, they do come in the new battle pack as well. So if you want to build your army, get a few more in here. You can definitely mix and match with the plain phase twos. And if you're looking at upgrading your 212 clone trooper, I definitely recommend checking out Firestar's custom printed arms. This is not an ad by any means, but as you can see, I have purchased Firestar's arms for quite a few of my figures actually in the past. And I got them for the 212 and the plain phase two clone troopers in my battle pack review. So if you want to see them both in closer detail, definitely check them out and don't forget to use my code in the description for 10% off. But the main two figures we'll be taking a close look at because chances are by now you've already seen a review. If you wanted to see a review, you've probably watched someone else's video, but they won't necessarily have improved these two figures. As you can see, we have Fox and Palpatine out in front of us, but there are two big things that need changing for these figures. The first is definitely Palpatine's hairpiece. He doesn't have this sandy color hair in the movies, and yeah, perhaps it more matches his Clone Wars style, and that is what this ship is from, but he doesn't have his Clone Wars head. So we've got to make it more accurate to the real life Palpatine than the Clone Wars one. So the first thing we will be doing is popping off that old sand. It's like a sun bleached white hair. And then getting this white one that I most recently picked up from a Ninjago battle pack in preparation for this video, I guess, and adding it to Palpatine. As you can see, I think that just looks so much more accurate to how even portrays him in the movies and also looks a lot nicer on Palpatine. Even if we're not talking about accuracy, I just prefer the white hair to this yellowy hair. It also shows just how old Palpatine is becoming, not that he's meeting his end anytime soon. Now for Fox, this is going to be a bit harder to do one-handed, but the visor that we've given to put on him is one of the new grey ones. Now Cody saw a orange, actually I think it was either Cody or Vaughn, I think Vaughn probably beat Cody to it with the orange visor. So we know Lego can recolor them for clones but Fox has a black one in the show. So Lego have done black visors before. In fact, I've nabbed this black visor just in front from the clone from my very first Lego Star Wars set. So there are meant to be two of them, I think. I might have one somewhere in my storage systems. But if you take the visor, the black visor and put him on Fox, you can see just how much of an improvement that makes. And these are two fixes that I'm sure aren't too hard for Lego to do. So I guess the hair piece here, yeah, it matches the Clone Wars hair. That one's fair enough. So you can choose between the two hair pieces. 
but especially for Fox to get some black clone accessories. We can put them to use on a bunch of our other troopers and just would have been nice. A lot of other people have already pointed out the torso is colored somewhat wrong. I believe this white strip underneath the breastplates is meant to be red too, but that is something that Lego just completely oversaw when designing the figures. All the other figures are really cool. I mean, this Palpatine is definitely the best Palpatine we could have got and definitely a huge improvement to the old Clone Wars one that came in the Venator. I don't think we've got many, if any, other variations of that figure, so I can actually get him to compare. And as you can see between the two of them, I guess the only thing we could have asked for in the new one is the old material shoulder pads, but we all know Lego are going away from cloths. And that goes for Commander Fox as well. He does have one of them new printed on Karmas. If you do want to go and fashion your own Karmas, I definitely recommend checking out my video where I not only cut out some Karmas, I also 3D print some Karmas and they do look very, very cool. But there is one more figure that I haven't shown off and she is behind this door here. There's actually a mechanism just at the back, you might be able to see this little lever. And if you pull this to the back, the door does open, revealing probably my favorite minifigure from this set. Of course, the 212 Troopers we've seen before and Palpatine Fox do need a little improving, but this Padme figure is really, really cool, especially with any fans of the Clone Wars or even Thrawn, because this is the Padme that shows up. This is the costume Padme is wearing when she shows up in Thrawn Alliances. So there's gonna be some great mocks, I'm sure, from the LEGO Star Wars community built using this minifigure. And that does wrap up the five minifigures, but we are nowhere near having looked at all of the play features of this gunship. Now, there aren't as many as you would probably hope for, of course. The cockpits do open up and we can sit really whoever we want in there. We can't sit Palpatine because Palpatine does have this dress piece rather than legs, but they can all stand up in the middle. Now, whilst we're talking about this door, the one thing I would have liked to have seen is a double door, just the door to have been split in the middle. There's enough Technic pins here to still have them as stable as this one. And it's definitely a mod I will be looking at in the future. I've got a few different things I'm gonna break down this set for first, but I'm definitely going to be trying to put on a double door at some point. I've seen a few different modifications, none of which have really piqued my fancy, but I'll give it a go at some point. And it would have just meant that we could also fit more clones on the inside, because when you open the single door, you're still covering half of the interior. If you look inside, there is still probably about six studs width in there that you can't access because the door gets in the way. If this door had swung out here, you're just able to get more troopers inside. So perhaps it's a modification that I will make for trying to fit as many clones in here as I really think this is the only hope against the ATRT. Speaking of which, I have got the ATRT here just to compare the sizes of them both. As you can see, I definitely needed the bigger desk space when working on these videos but it does hold up to the size of the ATRT. I'm not sure if it's exactly as long as the ATRT is because of the blaster at the front and the two at the back. But if you were to compare the, just the stature of them, they definitely feel like they're worth every penny. And of course, the gunship's got these massive wings that do have stud shooters that do fire studs into the distance. And it's a good thing they come with spares because I'm pretty sure them pieces are now lost. But the other play feature, I think there's one at the back and you've got this little interior slot here, which previously has come with a little command outpost station. You could definitely get some clones or sink in there. It would have been nice to have got something in here from Lego because they have told down the base of it. So it does feel like we're missing something for the interior of that. And then you do have the usual blasters at the front, much like the ATRT built in the exact same fashion, I guess missing that one cone piece, but you can spin them near enough, about 180 degrees, probably just less than that with the top bit. But as I said, there is technically two more play features. The first one is this handle up here, which you saw me holding it with at the start of the video. And this is a really secure handle. It's similar to the one the ATRT has, only that is more of a two-fingered design. And 
it's definitely a bit top heavy. Whereas the handle for the gunship, you can see, is just for one finger. I suppose this one's even back heavy, so perhaps they should have slotted it back a stud or two. And I would have loved like the old 2000 and I think it's 2008 Veneta for the handle to have fit flush in there and not had that big gap behind which leads to the interior of the gunship. But honestly, that is really just nitpicking. It does blend in nice and well with the gunship when it's down because it's just a little bump bit here and you are distracted by other features such as the cockpit. There are no cannons on top. They've just sort of left it blank. So you can definitely add your own, but perhaps a Coruscant Guard doesn't exactly need them primed, ready to go because it's not exactly fighting in a war space. These were typically found on Coruscant and more of a police vehicle protecting People like the Chancellor who is wielding two guns. If you wondered why, it's because you can't fit, well, you can't fit the guns neatly into the cockpit. So the troopers had to have their guns go somewhere. And even if we got a weapons rack in this front bit, I feel like it just would have filled up what otherwise is an empty space. But anyway, taking a look at the back of the ship, you can just spin it round and it is quite a sizable model and we even get a better look at the mechanisms for how we can open the door you can see there are two one both sides so you don't have to open the doors together but you just sort of pinch it in and hopefully you can see that the door does rotate backwards and the last play feature is this little ramp that comes down and perhaps it's landing in a battlefield if you get the battle pack to go with it, you can definitely fit the bark speeder up there. I currently don't have my bark speeder built, but have this one from the Fiverr First Battle Pack, and it is a bit too tall. So you can only fit the older Lego style battle pack bark speeder because there's not enough clearance. I mean, that's probably about a minifigure tall, so they've got to be shorter than a minifigure to fit through that gap. But it's definitely a great way of storing your speeder. As I said, you can't access the back when the doors are shut or open. So you've definitely got the room just to whack it in there and that saves displaying it next to it, especially with how large this is. Now, I'll show this off on my display shelf in a minute. But first off, I just wanna take one last look at the size of this model. Here is a 501st minifigure scale bark speeder, two scale with the gunship. Now. The gunship isn't minifigure scale, and I'm not quite sure how big the gunship would have to be to be minifigure scale. I don't think this is honestly that far off because I remember thinking that the older gunships were roughly minifigure scale and they were just a little bigger than this. I don't have any of the older gunships to compare, and the closest I had to any sizable model really is the ATRT, but this does also take up nearly a quarter of the shelf that it's displayed on. As you can see, in trying to prepare for my stand-in desk, I've had to compact my Star Wars vehicles down quite a bit. The ATRT is quite long, but has quite a slim profile, sort of the size of the Bad Batch Marauder or the fighter tank. And you can see I've got one of the old 501st clones that have ripped off a battle droid head, which does look pretty cool. But the Coruscant gunship, because of the wings, it does mean it's taking up pretty much the rest of the space that the Marauder, the shelf on the left, and the ATRT doesn't. But it does also mean that you can fit certain ships and vehicles underneath the wing, just like my minifigure scale Tridroid, which is built from the new battle pack. That one I do still have. And of course, I've got a bunch of other minifigure scale ships that I've recently built, so check out them videos. But I'm very happy with how this turned out. Now let's take a look at the flower trellis. Now, of course, the main reason I do have this is because of the price of the gunship. But this is a really, really cool gift we purchased that was still around, I think, for my birthday. This saw it right up until the end of its days. And I'm not quite sure if Lego ever sold out of this. I don't know what they do with gift with purchases that don't sell out if they give them away to employees or Perhaps it's on a first come first serve basis, but it looks really cool. And I have actually added this to the background on my display. It's the closest thing, as I've said, to my ET set becoming a real set because I had a very similar premise to this with the bottom being thick enough to hold it, a backdrop of the trees and the moon with a bike coming out. And then this hook right at the top, which I have seen before 
in my Ravenclaw house banner. And also it's what's keeping my base plate of figures on the back wall. But don't worry, it won't be for long because hopefully in the next few days, perhaps even tomorrow, we'll be picking up the brand new display case and I'll show that off because you voted for it for nearly two months ago. But I'm sure you were watching this video for the gunship. I won't spend too long talking about this. I really like the flowers and one hidden thing that you don't really know until you're building it. So if you do have it to build, look away now. There is a ladybug just down here behind one of the leaves. And that's how the set tells you to build it. It is to be covered up with the leaf. So you can still see the side of it, but the print is on top. So it's a case of if you if you know, you know, and I really do like that in Lego sets, especially with some of the other colourful pieces they hired in Star Wars sets. So it's really cool to be getting this alongside the gunship. Again, I am a fan of the Friends flower poly bag, so perhaps I'll have to do something similar or build off the trellis to display them as well. Perhaps they can even be added to the bottom. So keep an eye for if this changes in the background and of course, Drop a like if you like this review and also if you just like either of these sets in general and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. May the bricks be with you always.